we start. Great. So, first of all, um, let's talk about uh, the tool. Uh, what do you know about us? Uh, virtually nothing, basically nothing. <laughs> okay. So, BureauWorks is a company in uh, the US, and uh, initially it was an LSP, and uh, now they're dealing with translation technology. The CEO, Gabriel Ferma, is uh, a translator himself, meaning that he understands the challenges of LSPs, translators, enterprises, and the tool is actually a TMS slash editor. So, it combines everything from the beginning to the end. Okay, so mm -hmm. it combines a translation management system. You can build your project, build the organization, the organizational units, and then prepare PA, payables, receivables, uh, everything. Have a vendor portal, a client portal, and combine the AI technology along with machine translation, translation memories, glossaries, and deep learning. So everything works together but they can also work isolated so you can have only tm or only mt or all of them combined mm -hmm. so here you can see uh, if i share my screen first of all i'm going to show you a little bit uh, the interface okay so here you see that i have the basic menu here and I have a bunch of projects here created. So the idea is that it is a very simple interface, but the architecture behind it is really complicated to provide all the features that you need. So if I go to translation settings, you see that I have MT settings, I have LLMs, and from this setting, I can enable augmented translation actions, so I can have alternative suggestion, automatic proofreading, fixing tags, translation smells, which is a semantic analyzer, and I can use all of them in my editor. So after having these settings on, and as per my wishes, then I can go and add my users, and by saying users, I mean clients, vendors, managers of the company it can be anyone and i have a quality module where i can customize uh, my uh, error categories and during the revision stage i can categorize my errors and this is a very good automation and probably i can show you because of the stage of the revision based on the error categorization the system can produce a report like an LQA and based on that it can suggest the translators who had the higher score for the next project. So this is our quality module. And here is where everything starts because everything happens at the organization level. By saying organization, we mean that we have a company like yours or like a client companies. It can be, uh, for example, Amazon. And under that, you can have only Amazon as an organizational unit, or you can build different departments of this company, meaning Amazon Marketing, Amazon Technical, Amazon Accounting. And based on this department, you can set up your translation memories, machine translation, all your settings, the people that will work for this specific department. So you can keep the permissions and the confidentiality for each organization. So here where we can prepare everything. And if you see the default organization, for example, you see that here I can have the translation settings like I want to use AI translation or I want to use translation memory and machine translation. Whatever I want to do happens at the organization level. So I also can add my glossaries and I can also add my TM and everything is here, price list, etc. After I set up the organization, I'm ready to go with the project. And the magic here is that the new project happens in just three clicks. So you just drag and drop the projects, then you select the workflow. And the final result is going to be that you're going to have this project, for example, 
which is going to have the workflow the way you want it, like translation and revision. You are going to have price list behind it that will produce automatically the cost. You will see the progress of it and you are going to see the due date. Of course, it is assigned to a vendor. And here you see, for example, that the translation workflow has been delivered and it is 100% completed. So I can go to the revision stage and I can show you all the features here. By clicking this, we go to the editor. It is as simple as that. But in spite of being really simple, it is really powerful because, for example, the first thing that we're going to see here is that, for example, by going here, you can see that you can add a term on the fly. So there are two options with the terminology and not many systems support these. First, you can extract automatically the terms before even you start the projects at the project creation step with AI. And you can upload the terminology that you want. So the system will update the glossary automatically. Or you can add the terms on the fly, like I can do this uh, here. For example, I take the word uh, document and uh, here I can add the term and say, okay, this is the translation, just so save it, and this is going to be applied and uh, added to the glossary. So once it is added, then you can see that this become yellow. And at this point, there is another magic thing that is triggered, which is that the system learns the terminology and every time we have a change, this is going to be applied to the glossary, to the TM, to the previous segments, to the next segments. So there is no chance that you don't have consistency in your terminology, even if at this, at any point of your translation, you change your mind and you want to change the term. So here, for example, we have this basic term because this is a, a new document and this is added to, to the glossary. You can see it here and all the terms are yellow so they cannot slip your attention. Additionally, because we're talking about deep learning and terminology, it is uh, very important to know that this deep learning go deeper, goes deeper. And it means that if you have trained translators, as per my experiment, working with AI translation and LLMs, this means that they will not have the same output. It is not static like machine translation. It is a dynamic workflow, a dynamic translation process where the system learns your style and it produces something different for me, something different for you. So you don't have to worry about your style because it is learned. The terminology is learned. And guess what? Fuzzy matches do not exist anymore because AI fixes all the fuzzy matches. So you only have to supervise the system to get correct translations in the end. And this comes from LLMs, let's say. But it's not only machine translation and uh, AI translation that we have here and we can decide what works best for us. We also have some AI powered features, which are the most amazing features. Here, for example, I go with the most simple, but the more, um, you know, exciting. So you can go to the BWX augmented actions and you can say, oh, the tags are missing or I had a very bad scanned uh, document with a bad OCR. So I have many ghost tags and many destroyed tags in my document. So by clicking fix tags, you get the tags directly placed in the correct position. So no more tags and uh, no more concerns about the tags. At the same time, you see that I have a translation error here, which is actually not easy to find because you don't have any mention about the spelling error. And this is a semantic error. So if you uh, look carefully at this target, you will see that it says on the protection of natural persons with regard to the processing of personal data and on the fee movement, which is not correct. Normally, no spell checker would catch this, but our translation smells, smells fishy, something in the translation. So mm. it says the phrase in Polish has been incorrectly translated as free movement of such data. The correct translation should be free movement of such data. So you see that the semantic verifier saves you from some glimpses, I would say, some bad translations that could happen because it is a human thing. Hmm. And uh, additionally, 
let's say that you want to correct this error. So by going to proofread, it starts the automatic proofreading and this error is going to be caught and uh, you are going to find it directly. It is here, now it is free. And you see that because we are at the revision stage, it says you can change the suggested category and explanation as you see fit. So a window starts, initiates, and is displayed with different categories. So you have the following categories to categorize this error, improved fluency, did not include fluency as preferential, incorrect translation, fluency, grammar, terminology. So you see that here, for example, I want to say that this is a, let's say, grammar error. And I can say that it is not fee, it is free, for example. And this note is going to produce in the end a report, like an LQA report, that you can use in many different ways. First, you can use it as a report to evaluate your vendors. You can share it with uh, your client. You can use it to check based on the preferential edits if there is over-editing or under-editing of machine translation or AI translation uh, on your project. And based on that, you can proceed with our further training. And in the end, you just use control enter or mark as reviewed, and this segment is saved. And the last feature that I can share with you, I think it is the last one, it is the alternative suggestion. So this works on the cloud. And the question is, how can we be secure? How can our data be secure? So this system works with ChatGPT 3.5 and 4 and Microsoft Azure, which based on the research, it's a very good combination for a good result, at least not for the low resource languages. And it is uh, SOC 2 type 2 certified, meaning that you work on the cloud, but everything is really secure. It is the highest level of security. So no worries because everything is getting deleted after 30 days, they don't go anywhere. And if your translators um, are willing to, to work with AI, they don't need to go out of the system and ask AI for, for an alternative suggestion because this is integrated. So by clicking alternative suggestion, the system asks AI for an alternative suggestion and it says that your translation is accurate and does not need, require any improvements. But for example, if I go back, because this is the, the revision state, if I go to the translation state, let me see if it lets me do this. So here, it is read-only because I have to go, but check this. If you go here and you want to reopen the translation step, you just go here and say revert to draft. And the reason is corrections, for example, and you say confirm. So this is open again, and we should be able to Okay, it is not. This work unit is, um, okay, it has been delivered. But you can modify it, you can revert it to draft really easily. And in this case, you can correct it. But what I wanted to show you, let me try with this again, or I can go to another demo, is that, for example, here, if I go to alternative suggestion, let's see if it brings something. Okay, so here you see, so just the translation, explanation, the word goals in English typically refers to the, the desired outcomes or achievements, while objectives refers to the specific aims or purposes. So the system gives you not only an alternative, but the whole explanation about why is this alternative a good option. And the amazing thing about it is that translator is placed at the heart of the translation process. We don't replace translators here, but we provide a platform where the translator reduces the cognitive effort and the productivity is increased, the temporal effort is decreased, and you have all the time to, to use your cognitive resources and your, you know, all, all your strength to go with the important thing, which is the, the problem solving and the decision making, the strategical, uh, let's say, skills that you need for post editing. Actually, I'm going to share with you that this is the most challenging thing here because 
translators have to go from typing to strategic thinking. Yeah. And this is the purpose of this program. And my best part is that because I represent the company, but I could not represent something I don't believe in, is that you don't work here uh, as being the innovator of the year because we were the winner of the Process Innovation Challenge and Love World 50. So we don't do innovation for innovation. We do innovation to be to have something useful for our audience, for our users. And uh, I think this is the, the beauty of uh, BWX. Okay, what is the, um, I like the features, the um, the fee free, the fact that it um, picks up a, an error that would normally be get through is very, very clever. What is the price of a license, a full license for this program? Of the license, okay. So mm -hmm. let me see where I have these. I open so many windows. Okay, so I believe, so here, if you go to euroworks.com, this is the next thing I wanted to show you. You can start a trial by going to get started, okay? Mm -hmm. And you have 14 days trial. You can start this today and I will explain why. Enter your name, your email, just get started, you or your, or your team. And the pricing goes like that. For the yearly plan, if you are only one translator, it's $7 per month. For the boutique plan, which is for 10 seats, and you can add uh, more uh, seats up to 30, uh, which co contains tasks, payables, receivables, and the quality management is $64 per month. Then the clockwork is up to 150 seat limit, 320 per month, and then you go for the quantum, which is for big enterprises and limited seats starting from 300, 1680 uh, per month. Here you have more automations and for the clockwork and for the quantum because it has the auto coding, auto billing, auto payments. Mm -hmm. However, for the boutique plan where you have, let's say, medium, uh, big, small to medium LSPs normally. The good thing is that you have an amount uh, of processed words per month, which can be increased up to 1 million. You have all the features, GPT integration, machine translation, the AI powered features, project management, terminology, translation memories, everything, payables, receivables, quality module. It's very useful and it supports more than 200 languages. And additionally, you have you know, let me show you supported languages is here. Okay, so you can see all the languages that we support, but we support also many, many files like doc, HTML, JSON files, PPT, SRT, XLIF, SDLX leaf, Excel, XML. Is it process PDFs, PDF files, non-processable? Files? Based on based on what Gabriel has searched so far, if it is a PDF coming like from a good quality, mm. then it can be probably read. But if it is like a scanned, a bad scanned, or you know, ma I don't know, manual thing, then it's not going to to be processed here. Mm. So it does not have the the technology to convert. What are the main What are the main advantages compared to the two main programs I use, STL Trados and MemoQ? What What does it do that those programs don't do? I would say that uh, the answer stays with you, mm. if I if I can say so, because you know we all use the other tools, okay? But here, this is a very good tool for direct clients, and uh, there are many. Um, Many enterprises using our tool right now in the US, and now we have this uh, penetration in Europe. So you see that the AI features are really amazing. You increase your productivity by 8%. It's very simple to use. And um, additionally to this, it's very easy to uh, work on the project management. So I believe that it gets you fast where you want to go without having the complications of the other systems because the more complicated the system is the more difficult it is to to learn it and the learning curve and uh, then you have so many things that you will never use and it happened to me 
um, a lot. But in addition to that, based on uh, based on the feedback and based on our research, it is very important the um, you know the price because it's very competitive. So if you see the pricing, all these features at this rate, I think it is a very good deal. So this would be to share with an audience of translators. I have I train, so I have a training program for translators. Um, is do you have an affiliate link that I can that you can give me to see if anyone is interested in mm -hmm. the program? Is that possible? Yes, it is possible. Uh, in this case, because I'm not uh, dealing directly with um, with affiliates, I'm going probably to to introduce you to Gabriel. Uh, mm -hmm. um, and the first thing that you have to do is uh, right now after our meeting, because this is how I can pass on the information to Gabriel. And mm -hmm. uh, so you go to uh, Bureau of Works and uh, Partnerships here and uh, for the Alliance program. So here you can find, I'm going to share it with you. So it goes. So there's an affiliate program within within the company. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fifty yes. percent commission. Wow, that's quite generous. Yes, exactly. It is uh, fifty percent of the commission, so it's generous. And here you may find the link. You can keep it, and you go to uh, you apply here, and you just fill in the form. So I'm going to. Uh, see that and uh, introduce you to Gabriel. So taking it from there, you can uh, discuss further and uh, you can have your affiliate link and share it with uh, your audience. Do I have permission to share the demonstration? Do you have a formal demo video that I can share with my audience? or Yes, after, yeah. yes, after this meeting. Uh, so I believe I can... I can stop recording. Okay, at some point. Yeah. So after this uh, meeting, I'm going to share with you an email. Yeah. And in this email, I'm going to have two presentations from Gabriel, which are the official ones. One is uh, a 10 minutes uh, demo, and the other one is uh, one hour. It is the birth of the language uh, flow architect, uh, which was a presentation for Gala. And in there, you can find the links to to the trial, to the pricing. So you have all the information there for you to refer to. And probably there I'm going to share with you uh, the, the email of Gabriel for direct communication. And uh, you can, once you apply, you can contact him, tell him that we have talked together and that yeah. you are interested in this plan. Okay, and this is um, Gabriel Fer, did you say Fairman? Yes. Um, Fairman. Okay, I can, I can write it here. We already you. connected him. Ah, okay. I'm actually already connected. Interesting. Um, just trying to wonder. Think when I when I connected to Gabriel. Mm -hmm. uh, um, okay. We yeah we have a lot of connections in common. Uh, yeah, that's a big audience. Yeah, definitely interested in affiliation and yeah my. My people ask me about AI tools, and the only ones I've talked about so far are DeepL and Co-Translator AI. So could you give me an advantage of BureauWorks over those tools, DeepL and Co-Translator AI? Because, I mean, they're similar tools, but it, it's like comparing apples to oranges. They're both in the same family. But is there a specific difference that you would say um, mm, BureauWorks um, Normally, as an expert, I'm not saying something if I'm not 100% sure. Yeah. So I'm, I'm having, you know, I you have to check what I'm going to say. Okay. okay. So I believe that I read in research that Microsoft Azure combined with ChatGPT 3.5 and 4 brings the best results in relation to DeepL or anything else. So it's the combination of it that makes our tool stronger in terms of output and uh, this is this is what makes it uh, i feel uh, more relevant because you can choose 
what to what you want to use but you can also add anything else to it so if you want to add a DeepL, you can just connect DeepL or any other uh, machine translation engine you want and okay. use it yeah so it's the combination the harness power mm -hmm. from combining things great okay um yeah if you if you can put me in touch with gabrielle and uh, i will definitely share share this with uh, we have an affiliates page as well so i can uh i'll just show you mm -hmm. i would be interested in getting you up on the on the affiliates page i'll just show you this very quickly it's this link here sorry i've lost you there you are how do i do the chat ah there it is uh that is an affiliates page we have um so that would be it would go probably on top of the tool section uh, mm -hmm. so we have uh tech affiliates and we put that if you just scroll down there is the website people then we have mm -hmm. so it would probably go above Ciudalia, which is a digital business card company. So it will probably go just above Ciudalia. I want that just below. Okay. That's Fantastic. our main clip. Yeah. So we mm -hmm. can offer, you know, we can offer, because I have an audience of about 4,000, I think, my audience. So, but yeah, could be of interest to get some sales. Yep. Uh, and I definitely get these questions. Um, so as soon as you said Bureau Works, I was interested because. Um, my colleague, uh, who I'm um, licensing some a module, was mentioned your company. So that as soon as you contacted me on LinkedIn, that was very interesting. To uh, to uh, anyway, I'll meet you. Um, I'll meet you next week. I'm arriving I'll, on Thursday. Come, please come to my session on the online presence if you'd like I to. Will. And uh, I talk about digital marketing, and I basically. What do I do? I teach people how to create demand, I suppose. I don't just, you know, I won't just say, you know, spruce up your LinkedIn profile with a photo and some interesting copy. I, I talk about digital marketing as a, as a, as a sort of whole holistic topic. So uh, I'll see if I can make some good points in, uh, in, in 40 minutes. Um, I have questions, just for you to know. I have, I already have questions. Oh, okay. What are your questions? Yeah. Oh, you want to wait?